Analyzing property deals can be a little bit confusing, but it's absolutely crucial to make sure that you don't make an expensive mistake. It can be quite scary analyzing lots of property deals and making offers only to realize that you're actually buying a property at a loss. I have seen so many auctions and properties recently that are overselling for what they're actually worth. And usually the reason behind this is because the average property investor doesn't analyze and run numbers to really understand professionally whether that property is going to work or not as a buy, refurb, refinance or flip project. In this video, I'm going to show you how I use my very own custom-built Notion dashboard to quickly and efficiently analyze property deals on Notion. I have an incredible Kanban dashboard that has a visual view of all the properties in my pipeline, all the way from making a call to the estate agent to viewing, offering and rejecting properties. And I can run all of the numbers and get anything from returning investment, yield figures, bridging breakdowns, all from the click of a finger and within seconds on each property that I view on Rightmove. I'm a huge advocate of having the most incredible system and processes in your business. And if you're looking to improve your business as a property investor, then I highly recommend checking out the Property Deal Analyzer, which is something that I've been working on for a long time and have put a lot of love, effort and care into it and used it day to day in my own property business. I found when working on my own property stuff over the past few months that estate agents can be very forgetful. When they say they're gonna call you back, they never do. So this is a great way for me to track what's going on in the property pipeline process. And I quickly and easily have all the information to hand and when I'm on the phone to an estate agent around that particular property deal that I've spent no more than three to four minutes analyzing to have all of the figures under the sun. Also, if you don't know what Notion is, it's like a glorified text editor that has anything from timelines to Kanban board to notes and text editors. Imagine a mixture of Google Docs, Trello, Asana, all wrapped into one incredible piece of software and it's completely free to use and you can download it onto your computer. I run all of my businesses on Notion from YouTube to property to freelance work. I have all these incredible custom built systems to help manage every single one. So let's jump in and I'll show you how I can quickly and easily analyze property deals straight from right move onto Notion. So here we are on the home screen of the property deal analyzer. Now on here, there's loads of different things that you can do that are really, really helpful to run a property business. So you have anything from tasks, goals, your existing portfolio, different help guides if you're a little bit stuck using it. And then most importantly, you have things like the flip and buy to let pipeline as well as the HMO pipeline, the state agent CRM where you can start to track which houses are attributed to which estate agent, so you know who to speak to at all times with all the contact details. And also then a contact book as well if you want to keep a list of local tradespeople, solicitors, brokers, and important people on your business. Now, here on my dashboard, I've got all of the quick links, and then I've also got things like tasks as well. So that I know that I need to speak to a builder, make an offer on property number two, and find an electrician for the very first fix of a brand new property deal. I could also then add things here like uh, find a brand new broker for next property project and then i want to do this by march the 31st and then once that's done all i have to do is select it and then that's done on my list so it's a really quick easy to use to do list and tasks on the home page there are also some really important things here around goals as well so if you are wanting to set goals in your business then what i'm looking at here is for example if i want to make five thousand pound through property and if that was on a monthly value i could say well my current is four thousand pound let's change this a little bit so let's say i'm making one thousand pound a month from property and my target is five thousand pounds a month this is telling me here that i'm 20 percent on the way to hitting my target whereas if i was making five thousand pounds a month then this would change to then completely done and there'd be a tick to say that i've met that particular goal so it's a great way of tracking your own goals in your business and holding yourself accountable. You can also then add in things like your why and why you want to do it. So if you know that your job pays you a similar amount of money and that's why you want to earn that amount, then you can put that there to remind you. And then also categorize it into a different type of gold as well. You can group and categorize your goals together. You can also track and look at all the different portfolio items you have as well. So if you had one item in your portfolio, you could have a picture here, you can have the street and you can see the purchase price, the gross development value today, and then the equity in the property, which is worked out automatically. But what I want to do is show you how I analyze property deals really, really quickly and easily using the flip and buy to let pipeline. So this is a Kanban board, which shows a visual view of all the properties that I'm working on at the moment. So for example, you can look at one here, which is 12 Park Lane in Dinnington. I've then got um, the status, so you can see whether it's on the backlog to call, waiting to confirm from the estate agents, viewing is booked, ready to offer, offer made or rejected. And at the moment, um, I've booked a viewing for this particular property. Now, this one is a little bit older at the time of recording, but you've got the link to Rightmove. 
I've got the amount of bedrooms, bathrooms, whether the property is semi-detached, terraced, completely detached. And then I can also then define the type of sales as so auction, private, estate agent. And here you can see that I've got anything from the asking price, the maximum offer on the particular property, refurb costs, gross development, whether to use a bridge or not, which will change all your figures, the amount of months that you'll need to refurbish the project. And you can see here that it starts to spit out lots of different figures automatically based on the inputs above. So you have ROI, you have profit, you have the total costs, your rough stamp duty, tax costs, surveys, etc., mortgage amounts, bridging arrangement fees, bridge interest payments. There's loads of different stuff here. So let's find an example property and we'll go through and see how all this is calculated and how to analyze a property deal. So I've found a property on right move and this was at auction very, very recently. And I'll use this as my example. Now, I've all I've done is gone on here and then created a brand new page. And that opens up this particular box where you have lots of zeros. Now, this will then naturally fall into the backlog. So the property I'm looking at is 11 Camel Road, S56UU. And what I can then do is just drop in an image of the property in here. That will then quickly upload it. And then what you'll notice is in a second, this will then load on the Kanban board so I have a good visual representation of the property and I remember which one this is. So let's have a look. So I know that the URL, let's have a look, is it's a private one. It was an auction with Mark Jenkinson. So I'm gonna drop the URL in here so I've got access to it at all times. I know that the property has two bedrooms and it has one bathroom. I know the property is a terraced house and it's through auction and it's a leasehold property. Now, all this is really useful to know, especially later on the line when you're looking at valuations. And what I can then do here is then type in the estate agent. So if I start typing in Mark Jenkinson, I can then add them onto the CRM. Now, you could do this separately and then start to fill in information for Mark Jenkinson, or things like a contact name, so um, John Doe. You could then put an uh, example, example email.com and then a phone number and then there you can see that it links the property to this particular person so you can go in separately at a later time look at the estate agent and see what properties are associated to that one particular estate agent so back to the property itself now this is where the magic happens so if i know on this property here that the asking price is 60 to 70 thousand pounds now i'll put this in at 60 thousand and I did my research on this property previously and I knew that the gross development value in the area of the property is £95,000. However, the property is going to cost about twenty pounds to £25,000 in the refurb. So if I put a £25,000 refurb cost in there, then I know with a max offer of around, let's call it, let's have a guess here and go for um, 65,000 pound. If the guide is 60 to 70, let's go in the middle. So if I know that my max offer was 65,000 pound and I'm gonna use a bridging loan and do it for six months, I can then see here that already this property would make a minus 7% return on investment because it's making a 3,600 pound loss after you've factored in all of the costs. So let's change the purchase price. Let's move this down to 60 and see how it changes the figures. 3% still still very low and then let's get down to 50 which I know I'd never get this property of 50,000 pound but it's good for illustrative purposes so you can see here that with a six month refurb using a bridging loan that it's almost a 30% return on investment you'd be making 12 and a half thousand pound profit and your total costs altogether is 82,432. Now what this is adding up is everything from the deposit, the legals, all of the extra refo costs, everything put into the project, how much it's gonna cost. Cause then you look at your gross development value minus the cost and that equals the profit. So you can see here, it's all completely worked out straight away and I have all of the figures. So I can then go through and know that over four and a half thousand pound is gonna be my stamp duty surveys and legals. I know that my bridging arrangement fee is 375 pounds. The interest payments will be 318 pounds a month. And therefore, total bridge costs is over two and a half thousand across six months. I know that I'll need 15,000 pounds as a deposit to purchase the property. I know that I'll need 44, of almost 45,000 pounds of my money into the project. And then also when you look at whether you're gonna refinance or sell it, I knew or know that if I then refinanced it, I would leave about 11,000 pounds in that particular deal and pull the rest out, which is 46,000. Or if I sold it, I'd get 57,500 
from my original uh, money in, which is 44,000. If I then want to add another layer to it, like rent for example, so if I know that the average rent in the area is 500 pounds for the property, and then what it shows me here and quickly calculates, as you can see that, is that you've got the annual rent, the annual buy to let cost, which is your mortgage and different maintenance and management fees, and then that gives you your net profit and yields. Now, if I want to add the managing agent on, that will then change it and reduce it by adding the usual 10% cost that come with the managing agent, which then just adjusts your net profit and the yield. So you can see here from one property, I've got a really quick view of all of the property deals and the figures behind it. And all this information is really easy to get off of Rightmove. All you need to do is go to the sold comparables and then also check out my video that I have on costing up a refurb, because once you know how much the refurb is gonna cost and how much it's gonna be worth, you can plug in essentially the max offer the refurb and the gross development value and that will give you all of this really rich in-depth information on the property deal analyzer to quickly analyze a property. Now what you can see here, if I then delete this one, I can then call the estate agent, make a viewing, I would then put it into viewing booked for example. Once I've then booked it and then I make an offer on the property, you could then put it in this particular column and then you put it into either completed or rejected depending on what happens with that particular offer. So you always know and I know at any one point where each particular property is in the process and whether I need to chase things up, whether I've got particular offers out that haven't that a estate agent hasn't come back on and it really helps me run my property business in the small time that I have available. If I then go into the estate agent and CRM part of the section, you can see here I've got the one that I added earlier and then this is one that I added long, right a long time ago. So you can add an image, so you have logos and I know that this is John Doe Estate Agent, so I've made all of this up and it's all placeholder data, but you can see that then it's linking the houses to that particular estate agent. So if I then go back to the Flip and Pie Select Analyzer, and I know that Simpson Place in Mexborough is allocated to John Doe Estate Agents, I can visually see as well which estate agent that is with, which again is really, really useful. And the very last thing to mention is that I do store a lot of contacts as well. So. This is a bit of a placeholder, but for example, if I met a builder called Bob Smith, I know that he is a builder and his company is called AB Builders. And then it's abbuilders.com, builders.com, and then it's build at email.com. It's a really, really good way of quickly storing all that information. So I then have Bob Smith, the builder, all his information ready to go in my contact book in the future and I can just give him a call, give him an email and have all that information stored within my central system for my property business. So I have used this religiously over the past few months and it has really, really helped quickly and easily analyze a lot of deals. It has gotten me through a lot of different negotiations with estate agents because it is a bit of a numbers game and by knowing your numbers, you're really gonna know when to walk away. So I hope this has been useful in, in seeing what my system is like. If you wanna get your hands on it, there's a link in the description. I'll leave a little link down there that you can check out and have a look for yourself and see what you think. I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to check out the link below or I've got loads of other great videos on this channel like this one on top here, which is my top tips of viewing a property and how to cost up a refurb. Or you can view on the one on the bottom, which is my top 2021 buy to let hotspots. So feel free to check out one of these and I'll see you on the other side.